All right, so let's dive right into part two of painting this beach scene. So we've got the underpainting begin, the beginning of the underpainting for our clouds, our ocean, and our sand right here. And we need to start trying to pull some of this together to make it uh, you know, really work. So let's do that. I'm going to turn off this lock transparency to unlock this layer. Part of the reason is if you look closely right here, you can see where that white got pulled down. What happens is when you have the transparency locked and you paint with a smudgy brush or something, it'll pull down and actually show uh, the white canvas behind it. It's just a little quirk of Art Rage. Uh, don't really have that issue with any other program, but this one does that. But it, it's a minor thing, but it still does it. So it can be a little frustrating when you're trying to work on stuff to get it done. And you get something like you like it, and then it pulls down to a blank canvas. But anyway, neither here nor there. So let's work on defining these clouds a little bit more and getting some of that sun to come up through here. So we're going to drop back down to that cloud layer. Again, spacebar, click to drag the canvas around. And I want to try a couple different things to show you a few different ways to do this. So with this, I am going to grab, actually tell you what, let's, I'm going to show you the oil brush. Let's go with everlasting oil. And we're going to select this by alt click, select a little bit of a lighter peach color, but I want to go even brighter than that. And I want to go a little bit more towards yellow with that. So right there, that's not a hundred percent white, but it's getting pretty close. All right. So I am just circling in some white there. Now notice that the layer above it, which is the ocean, picks up that texture. Okay. So if you're going to switch to an oil brush, that's going to be under something. You need to be aware of that. All right. But it is a good way to get it set in there. And then I'm going to switch over to this cloud brush and shift down a little bit. and soften it out. Actually, I'm going to go ahead. I don't want that texture there at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that out, rub it out with the palette knife like so. So why use the oil brush instead of the gouache brush? Just mainly if you want texture is the real reason. Uh, I started out before they had the custom brush set up in here. I started out using the oil brush for just about everything. Okay. Now what I'm trying to do is streak this lightish color across a little bit here. Cause I really want to open some of this up. like so. And tap in where, how we're going to define these clouds a little more. I think actually, remember I was talking about using the marker tool. Let's do that a little bit. Kind of smudge this in like so. I can come back and take out some of this, this linear type stuff, but I also like how it lays in for some of it as well. So it's just a matter of kind of playing around with the different textures, what you like, what you don't, how you want it to be laid out how you don't and then switch back to my gouache and kind of soften this but by having some of that see I'm not getting rid of all of that streakiness just softening some of it 
it starts to really give you that feeling of clouds pulling back into the distance, like so. Okay, so that's why I use it. You can also, there's a bunch of other things you can do here. You can use the pen tool if you wanted to. Um, and really, it gives you that nice bright color for the inking, which works great, for example, if you wanted to really kind of blend this in a little bit. And then switch to your other brush to soften it. If you want to do some of these clouds where are even more wispy, Again, coming up, think about that X that we were doing a minute ago where it comes in. And it, so you're kind of doing the bottom of the clouds. And then I do recommend every now and then really zoom in to like 100%, because this is a 16 by 20 canvas. And so I can really zoom in and look at what's going on with some of these. So, for example, if I see that there, that is from. where I brushed it in earlier. So like if I don't like that line and I want to get rid of it, I can do that. Kind of uh, delete it out. If I want to soften some of these, I can do that. That's really from that marker tool. Like so. But it helps to zoom in every now and then so you can look for things like that where you've left some artifacts or something from a, another tool that you may or may not like. And it's kind of the same as when you paint with traditional. You know, you may get a brush mark here or there that you just like distracting it doesn't really add to anything um, so you just go back and feather it out similar kind of concept all right so I'm gonna go back to this here and I'm gonna switch to one of our presets let's try this smooth and transparent ink see what we get there okay so that's really gonna let us build it up quite a bit because I want this underlit for the way it's coming around so I'm just going to kind of and this is similar to that marker tool for the look of it but it's it's it is slightly different okay Zoom out, see how that looks. You always want to work from a more zoomed out perspective because you may look at something up close that you think, oh yeah, that works. You zoom out and you don't like it, kind of like I didn't like the top of this. So it helps to zoom out and take a look at stuff. these clouds to be really kind of soft just real subtle changes of color 
and cloud and shadows and stuff. Okay. Now, if you find that you're overworking some of these and you want a little bit more uh, variation to these, you can actually use another trick that I use. So I'm going to jump up to this layer, which has literally nothing on it and come down to my sticker tool and you have these cloud brushes here that you can use so for example if you wanted to but they are a little harsh if you want to vary it what i like to do is actually come over here and dots fluff explosion um, any of those the other one is are these flower brushes kind of thing so you can grab some of these and lay them on here so you're probably going to think what the heck is he doing and just give me a second here and i promise you'll understand it <laughs> i'm looking to see if there's a different one that i want to use paint splats can work really well all right so you can take one of those brushes and then by selecting some of these different colors here and there because of the way some of these work they just throw in random colors you know some of them will throw in random uh, like multiple colors They're the way that the, it's set up in the stickers and do it on a separate layer play around with it and get it how you like then go over to the palette knife heavy blurred frosting go with a little bit bigger brush and then in a circular motion start fading some of this out and this works great for giving you those puffy type clouds but it's more random because of the way it throws it down on there. So if you find that your clouds are being a little too stiff and not quite looking how you want, or you just want to kind of change it up a little bit to have some different atmospheric clouds, this is a great way to do it because you really have extremely little control over it. And you can blend these out as much as you want. and really get an interesting kind of cloud. So see, it gives you just something different. And you may be like, oh, I don't like this up here. So that's easy. Just take your eraser tool, erase it out, and blend it back. And you can just keep doing that as much as you want. You can uh, lower the opacity on it if you want you can just soften it and everything else until you get it really where you like it so see I think that adds a little bit of interest something quick and easy to do if you find yourself kind of struggling to get the clouds in or you want a little bit different shape or something like that it's a great way to do it Soften some of these edges. I want this to kind of fade into the blue. Like so. All right. like that a little bit more randomness of it okay I think that I like that better Oops. airbrush bring that size way down I'm really gonna make that 
that kind of shine in there. There we go. Okay. So I think that works for that. We'll come back to it. Let's work on this a little bit as well. I want to add, I do want to add a bit of a wave coming across. So I think what I'll do is go to blue, a little bit darker. Something like that. Okay, that's going to take a little while. Let's just switch. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of laying the groundwork for this wave shadow to be there. I can even go with the inking brush. If you're getting a little impatient like me, like so. So just lay that across there. This is going to change from this bluish color to the opposite here. So we'll go a little bit into that because it's going to get some of that yellowish, orangish color kind of cast through here. Now that kind of fades into itself there. like so. All right, so we can zoom in just a little bit and then work this with our brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm doing a kind of a back and forth with it, but I'm going to try a different brush. Yeah, let's go back to this, maybe this watercolor inky. That's going to burn out the color a little bit much, so I don't think we're going to go with that one. There we go. Yep, I think this gouache dry brush will work just fine. It's a little closer as far as the pattern for it, so that's why it works a little better. Okay, so just kind of fade this. like that. So we're getting that really kind of softened in there and it gives this natural transition of the color as it comes down. We can even go ahead and grab some of this white color, kind of lay some of it in, 
And for this one, it may work better just to go back to this little gouache brush here. Like so. So now I'm going to actually save a little bit of time here by going over to my stencils. And then on the Gumroad stencils, I have a water ripple one that I'm going to use. So shift and control lets you stretch it, control lets you enlarge it, like so. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger, and then brush from the center out. And that gives me some of the ripples that I need. just a little faster. See? Okay, now I have another one that these ocean waves and this one works pretty good in a similar manner. So if I want to try and put in some of these Alt allows me to tilt it slightly because I want this to be kind of circling off to the side there. And then I can select this darker color and a similar thing kind of come from the outside in. Like so. I could definitely paint this stuff here, but the point of a stencil is really just to be a time saver more than anything else. So I start getting some of those waves here. Change my brush color. So, a little bit darker. Let me start getting some of that rippling. Or maybe it's kind of breaking off from the middle as well. So I'm like maybe there's rocks under here and it's kind of breaking this way as well as coming in towards the shore. So just kind of an interesting thing to think about. Oops, sorry about that. It's the wrong button there. Okay. go 
went a little over the edge there, but I can fix that in just a second. But I do want to put in some of this. It's just a sweeping motion like this. So it's just kind of like it's this motion, but smaller. It gives that real wave kind of feel. Like so. And again, that's the thing with the way I paint and the way I encourage people to paint is to really take and build up your underpainting and just keep refining it. You don't want to piddle around with it and play around, but you want to be refining it so that all these elements start to really work together and pull the piece together because it's really just a matter of you know adding in all these layers of back and forth that gives the impression to your mind of hey this is looking like a beach hey this is looking like a um, Uh, the scene that you want. Like so. Okay. So that's kind of coming into there. Now I'm going to take this and go to a little bit of this bluish color here to get some of that. Pulled in like so. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. Like so. that same rocking motion we just kind of keep building it up and going back and forth Like so. Okay. So we're starting to get some of that to pull together and give us that kind of an ocean feel. You could even take a little bit of this, stretch it out some. Up of what you want, like so. Okay, so we can get that to start coming in like so as well. All right. So again, still underpainting, not really putting all the frosting on it, if you will, but still kind of getting how we want, where we want uh, the different aspects of it to look and be. So one of the things I want to do is kind of put in this layer of where the foam is going to be. So let's go with a little bit of a 
purplish color. A little bit muted. How does that look? Yeah, that'll work. All right. Well, let's go with the good old impressionistic cloud brush. So, okay, and we're going to add a lot of texture and stuff to this, so it'll look kind of funky right now. Again, underpainting, but we'll get it built out as we go. Okay, now one of the things with this you got to think about uh, is you want to slightly, once you get it kind of shaped in for where you want the majority of the foam to lay out, think about how to blend it back into this background so that it, you want to elongate it like this, okay, so that you've got, it looks like it's laying on the beach. Okay. So by doing it this way, we're getting it to really kind of lay down on there. So you can see it's kind of pulling into it. And, and even that starts to really make everything kind of come together. And I promise you there is that point where it all just kind of says, oh, it all clicks together, you know. So, But the underpainting takes a while to get it there. And then you, as you build the layers in and everything starts, you know, kind of pushing together, the colors kind of start harmonizing and you're softening it in it really starts to take on that that look and feel of what you need okay so let me save this and then we'll move on to starting to refine and pull it all in together and some more and adding details stay with me i promise we'll get there it's just a matter of going through all the steps okay